koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit, and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. testimony of your wisdom. Lift your voice and pray. I declare it. My life is a sign and a wonder. A testimony of your power. A testimony of your goodness. A testimony of your glory. Decree and declare our life is a testimony. Isaiah 62. Let's keep standing. Isaiah chapter 62. We'll read the first seven verses. And if I were you, I would believe everything we're about to read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. It says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of God. A royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Mm. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. He says, Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Seven, he says, And give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Lift your voice and say, Father, I declare 
my life must become a testimony. I place a demand upon your grace. I place a demand upon your power. Pray. Give him no rest till he establishes you. Give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the end. Lord, we believe your word. We continue to press. We continue to press until we become testament. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and then you'll be seated. Lord, my spirit and my mind is open. Not just your spirit, my spirit man and my mind is open. Lift your voice and pray. I receive illumination. Are you praying outside? Are you praying? My spirit is open. My mind is open. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Spirit of the living God, we are here again and we trust the supply of your power. We receive spiritual intelligence. We receive illumination. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Therefore, Lord, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other. And tonight, O oh God, our hearts and our minds are opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening, everybody. It matters to God that we grow. It doesn't just matter to God alone that we are saved. The entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Listen very carefully. The entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Your spirit, your mind, your physical body, your life, the entire three realms... In the realm of the spirit, the realm of your mind, and even in the physical, the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of Christ. If one or more of these realms um, does not successfully communicate the victory of Christ, you are going to limit the presentation of the power, the victory, the reality of the victory of Christ will not find full expression in our lives. Therefore, we must continue to press, listen carefully, to make sure that Christ is a contention and is a journey. To make sure that Christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives. In the realm of the Spirit, you are sound spiritually. You are growing. You are conforming to the image, the character of the Christ. Are we together? Your life is becoming a representation of God. You are hosting very superior dimensions of His presence. Then your mind is enlightened. You are sustaining an understanding that is higher, far higher than the intelligence of the average human being. And then your physical environment, all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in Christ. You are only fruitful in your Christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates 
in revealing the victory of Christ. If I am sound spiritually and I am anointed, but then my mind is barren and unfruitful, there is a dimension of God that my life will never be able to present. Are we together now? Yes. If I am wealthy and I am influential, and I have a healthy mind, but my spirit is dead. There is a dimension of God I will never be able to communicate. The lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of Christ through a man, what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness, is the reason why there is a lot of unfulfillment in our Christian experience. So it's as though... You should select one area where you want Christ to be revealed. And some selected finances, some selected intelligence, some selected spiritual health, some selected influence, some selected career. And so everybody just selects. And God says, no, I will never be revealed holy like that. The entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the assignment in building you by the Spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by His grace, no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful. Are we together? I have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the Spirit of God through these teachings is very clear. There is a picture already we are not guessing what we will be like. Are we together? The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But then Christ has already exemplified all that we should become. So we continue as we behold him as in a mirror. The Bible says there is a change, a metamorphosis. Like an insect transits from egg, lava, pupa to the adult. That's what is happening to us. So never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed. Don't worry. Your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder-working power of the Spirit. A woman's assignment is to be pregnant. The dynamics of the growth of the child, leave it to God. Every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach, whether she can feel it or not. And then at a point, she starts sensing that, look, this child is becoming real. And then nine months later, she gives birth to a healthy baby. Imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering, what part of him is growing now? Is it the leg or the head? You are going to stress yourself. A system has already been designed in you. When your part is played, God's part kicks in immediately. So, it's not everything that you need to know. There are things that you need to know. You don't need to know everything. But the part you should know, if you don't know it, it will make God look unfruitful in your life. Hallelujah. As we prepare for our retreat, I'm very excited about the weekend because for, for us it's a time... It's a time when our lives will never, never be the same. I really believe it's the first time we're having two-day stretch retreat. Usually, one day will be for the leaders and then everybody. But the kind of information you're about to receive cannot be passed in one day. You need to sit down and get this thing. I prayed to God and I prayed for you. I said, Lord, they must get it. They must get it. When you get it, it shows. He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can doubt what you hear. Sometimes you can even doubt what you see, but what your hands have handled. Now, it's too real to doubt it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is a response. Um, many times I'm led by the Spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the 
issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the Spirit, or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation. It may just be that when I, I examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages, and once I find out that a people continually need clarity over certain aspects, then I know that it's a sign that I should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment. And I think that recently one of the areas that I would say a lot of people have had, it's, it's a growing frustration, is why the victory in Christ, the success that the Bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge, partnership with the Holy Spirit and obedience. What is really hindering the manifestation? Listen, tonight's teaching is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says, Blessed be the God of our Father, you know, our Lord and Father Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we are not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we are blessed. Everybody say, I am blessed. That is a fact. The Bible declares it. Number two, the Bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings. Are we together now? And the Bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context. When the Bible tells you a thing is spiritual, that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence. It is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm. Listen very carefully. And then number three, the Bible says it is in heavenly places. That is where these realities are domiciled. Now, follow me very carefully. So we are blessed with all blessings. How many? All blessings. All blessings. This is the revelation of what grace is. Grace is any and everything only God can produce. It's not just unmerited access. Any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the Christ and in the Christ is called grace. Anointing is grace. The wisdom of God is grace. The peace that surpasses all understanding is grace. Are we together? Righteousness is grace. Mercy is grace. Every constituent that only the Christ can produce is called grace. Please listen. You have to understand this. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. So, spiritual blessings from above, heavenly places, but routed only in Christ. Now, the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in Christ. An angel cannot be the basis for grace. Are we together now? Yes. Christ is the epicenter. Listen carefully. Now, grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly. That means if grace cannot, if that reality is not captured in the Christ, you don't, there's no point seeking it. It's not available. So, before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and working in any reality, your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of God has made that reality available. And the way you know is to find out whether the Christ, His person, Jesus, the door, does He lead you to that possibility? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am life. He said many things about himself. He also said, I am the door. Not just the good shepherd. Not just the bread. Are we together now? So the grace of God 
is the basis for availability of anything. The grace of God has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed. That is why we can press for the anointing. The grace of God makes his prosperity available. The grace of God makes his righteousness available. Listen, the grace of God makes access into the mind of God. Access into the gifts of the Spirit available. This is the correct and balanced communication of grace. So you approach the grace of God as a summation, the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the Christ can provide. You cannot route the grace of God through any other formula. That does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula. You can. But if it must be by grace, it has to be in Christ. <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed. Listen, we just finished the series on spiritual stability. And the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending. Meaning if anyone gets up now, no matter how well meaning, and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in Christ, you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is, is an error because the Bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now the next question becomes why then? Because you see, listen, I hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit. This is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all. Say I am a spirit. Not I have a spirit. If you say you have a spirit, you are wrong. You are a spirit. Are we together now? Yes. That spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory. If you are in the realm of the spirit, you don't need a physical body. Are we together? Your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate. But if you are in this physical realm, it was so designed that you must have a material body. Not necessarily a mortal body, but a material body. A body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment. That's why God made man from the elements of the earth. When Bible says God made man from the dust, it's a generic statement. It doesn't mean God used mud. It means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements. So you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation. For instance, the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks. That's why they don't decay. A man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years, just like a rock can remain. You see, the hair of man, you see it in the similitude of grass. You can cut grass, it can grow back, your hair. So it means God made man, he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment. That's why the environment should not hurt you. Because you are compatible. If your environment hurts you, then it means something else is playing out. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's called the law of territory. So when the world wanted to become flesh, he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die. If Jesus was going to die in Venus, the planet Venus, he would find out, thank God he is the wisdom of God. He would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that. That's the reason why when angels, every time angels were to come to the earth, they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit, they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm. Then the angel can now communicate to you. Are we together now? Or the angel assumes a material body. It's a privilege that the angels have. They can translate themselves and assume bodies. And then come into your realm. And at that point you will not need to see a vision again. They can walk like you. You can now use your natural eyes. You can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes. Now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes, it's just the interpretation of your mind. I hope you know that you... 
you don't see with your eyes. <laughs> Look at this. Shut down a man's brain. Keep his eyes open. Will he be seen? You see through your eyes. You see. Your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through. But what processes that image is not this. That's why if you read in the book of Acts, Paul was blind, yet he was still seeing visions. That's why blind people can still be productive. Because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes, it's the mind. Are we together now? So, the Bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But the challenge now is that, as you've always heard me say it here, once it is true that we do not seek God because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige, all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking God. But God so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek Him, listen very carefully, all of these privileges and these blessings, because remember He designed them, and He designed them to be the support system for your serving Him. Is that true? That means that I will serve God effectively. If I say I designed something to support you, it means that you may, you may not necessarily die without it, but you will not be effective without it. Are we together? Now, many believers are getting frustrated. And this is the reason. My message starts now. They are aware, because this is the word of God, that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But the frustration is beginning to grow. How long do I have to wait? How do I know whether something is fake or demonic or that I'm not obeying something? Because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression. When a woman gets pregnant, she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks. But she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever. Is that true? She knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly, she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently, but she knows it is around a season that my EDD is on the 14th of September, plus or minus the doctors will give. 14th of September cannot be 6th of March. That is demonic. Are we together? That's too far. So there is a time period. There is an approximation. That is the same way with a believer. Meaning when you start your journey. This is you now. You are starting your journey. You should be able to accomplish. You should be able to know that, okay, by the time I get here, what should have been possible in my life? Everything may not yet experientially be manifest, but there should be what I call a token, a consolation. Something that motivates you that I got it right. Okay, I started five years ago, praying in tongues one hour every day, reading my Bible five chapters every day, reading my Moonrose book. After five years, I should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life. It encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest, I'm getting there. But when your life becomes Ichabod, that everything at all, spiritually, even if there's nothing materially, let there be spiritual intelligence. Let there be the anointing. Praying one hour every day for five years to the same God of heaven. And not one sick person has been healed through your hands. And not, I mean, you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass. At that point, you know that something is wrong. Are we together? 
Many believers are now wondering. Then your spirit man receives that thing. You are doing well spiritually. Everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire. But then, relative to what God has shown you, you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening. Then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process. Are we together? When you start working with God, your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow. Are we together now? You, you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that. That's, that's, too, that's too unneeded for that level. When people get born again, they are exposed to fire. Principles of prayer. How to study the word. Understanding the foundations of righteousness. Are we together? Repentance from dead works. They need to understand the redemptive work of Christ. They need to be introduced to the person of the Holy Spirit. The value of corporate gathering. Are we together? All of these foundational things, they have to be involved. But then eventually, now you are in need. Your child is in need. And now your mind comes in. So you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of God's word. But then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings. This is where my teaching is now. The barrenness of God being represented in your physical life. You may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up. But sooner or later, the reality of time will start demanding God to be manifest in your physical life, not just your spirit alone. The vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life. Otherwise, you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen. That the challenge that now obstructs your spirit life will start from the natural realm, physically. Are we together? Yes. So this gentleman has not eaten. And he's surprised that he can't pray. The realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here. He's standing and he's watching two of his kids. They are driving them from school and he cannot pay. And when he started with God, the issue of finances was not an issue. But at this point, as a father of two, you can't ignore it. Are we together? And he's getting frustrated. When he started ministry, everybody used to meet under a tree. So there was no need for bench and mat. If you fell down, you fell on the grass. But he took it a step further and he opened a church. Are we together? And now you don't sit on the floor in a church. And he just realized that they need to buy chairs. And he just realized that in that church, people will get married one day. And that means the reality of family life, their well-being. That if the families are not doing well, no matter how anointed he is, very soon there will be empty pews. Now, this guy is, is, there is a need for the revelation of Christ to find expression, not just in the spirit realm, not just in the realm of the mind, but also in the physical. This is where many of us are now. Apostle, the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness that Christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when he dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the Bible says is full of grace and truth so I want to help us tonight to show us, because let me tell you, let me give you a very kind advice. Never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws. Never allow your personal frustration. I know this is very painful. You are, you are far from receiving the help of God. When you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and God from it. And say, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing what should be done. Why are things not working? Now, many times, 
the mistake is never from God. A gentleman sent me a text today, probably he's following, and he was going to commit suicide by this night. I don't mean this play play, I will kill myself. He really was going to do it. There's how you know that somebody means business with suicide. The kind of dreams he's having. The, somebody cannot just wake up and say, I want to kill myself. He's just looking for help. But there, there are things that can lead to, you know that this person will actually kill himself. And I was telling him, I said, no, no, you don't have to kill yourself. And the person says, usually this is it. I have done everything I know to do. Or I have done everything koinonia teaching says to do. Or I have done everything my pastor or the word of God says to do. I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you. If it does not work, you are missing something. Hmm. The systems of the kingdom are so flawless. If you really get it, your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come. Now, this is an, an uncomfortable truth. But I want us to please, for God's sake, humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention. That if something is not working in my life and your life, there is something. You know, have you seen a learner learning how to drive? And then the learner is surprised. Why is this car moving that way? I thought you said I should talk. I'm doing my best. He thinks, based on his mind, that he's doing his best. But the professional knows what is wrong. And the learner will argue and say this and that and that. No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts, a school of ministry students, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for, in, for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly and I'm the one that is doing the marking. From a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. Now, but you ask the person who wrote it. I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person, just because he read and just because he wrote. You can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it, doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five. But your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want, by the grace of God, I think for many of us, I know what is wrong. And I want to show you this night. And I want you to listen. Because I'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened. So what is wrong? You will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. Outstanding success has a huge price. Write it down. For someone, this is already a deliverance. Because you believe that success, just because the Bible says he has given us all things, just because the Bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life, 
among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated. The idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in Christ, that word, if not well explained, can mislead you and make you fail. Now the Bible is saying, I have been given all things. If I have been given, it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive. And you are not wrong. But the system of reception is every other thing I will be saying. For many people, we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith. I receive. You see it now? But that's incomplete. The same way the system of God giving you this. You see, the Bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions. And so when you are interpreting scripture, you have to first understand the context. What was the subject matter that was being addressed? Because it will help you know why certain expressions were used. When Paul in his Pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption, you notice that his communications was, uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of Christ. You will never see in Paul's context his exegesis on redemption. He does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done. So he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities. But now you switch to the other dimension, which is coming into the experience of the kingdom. And Paul begins to change his communication. It is not a, he is not counteracting himself. He is now showing you, why should I want to press to enter something that is an inheritance? So Paul gets to the book of Hebrews. And Paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this, he said there remained a rest for the people of God. Are we together now? He now begins to talk of the Sabbath of the church and the Sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest. That means until today, men have not entered into the experience of this. And he says, today, if you hear his voice, he says, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Is that true? And then the Bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. And he now introduces something straight. He said, not mixed. A Jimmy's wife is a professional baker. The word mixed doesn't mean to talk. It means it involves action. It involves process. When you mix something, you combine factors together. And the Bible said, not mix with faith. Faith is part of the many things that should be mixed. Not mixed with faith. Like you say, you didn't add salt to the food. The food is not salt. There were many other things before salt arrived. But for the taste you are looking for, salt is the ingredient that must be added. Not mixed with faith in them that heard it. And so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives. Success has a huge price. It truly is very costly. The earlier you got this, the better for you. Settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Number two. Like I will always say, failure too has a huge price tag. Many people don't know that it's not easy to fail. They think it's very easy to fail. If there is a price to produce the results that we need, what is that price? I'm not going to be talking of many of them. I'm just going to mention one that I believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence. Write it down. And listen very carefully. Please don't assume you understand what I'm saying. The price of diligence. Proverbs 14, verse 23. Read it for me 
If you are a serious Christian, one, two, read, please. But the talk of the lips only does what? In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury. There is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor, requires diligence. Diligence is a trait that all successful people, whether in ministry, in business, have. Many believers are busy. Many believers are taking action, but they are not diligent. Write this down. Diligence is the quality of being productive. Write it down. Diligence is the quality of being strategic. Diligence is the quality of being resilient. Unbending the refusal to bow out. Diligence is the quality of endurance. Please listen to me. In Africa, I don't know if it's a social cultural context, but we have a very funny understanding about success. We have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves. But I think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that God or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful. Or we just feel, I may just put my hands here and there. And then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence, and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you are a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Any time an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided... When did you marry? What's the date? 15? Now, they, they decided to bring time 
and attach an event to 15 September. The moment they took the risk to create an event, people started having time for them. And resources started coming to them. Now that the event has been achieved, nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it. Listen, listen. By 1990, there was no time for Zuckerberg. There was no time for Facebook because that product was not created. There was no event that will make you have time for Facebook. So a gentleman said, let me make men have time and with that time will come resources and he made available an event and now we have time for Facebook there was no time for Koinonia, before Koinonia started your Friday nights were for something else, the moment there was a vision, that vision brought time to it and with that time every resource came is that true? so when you say time is money Time is not necessarily directly money. Time is only money when an event, a creativity was added and attached to that time. It will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources. So when you pay Zuckerberg, you are not paying him for the product necessarily. You are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing. Are we together now? Now you all have time for browsing. Once upon a time, you could not do that on your phone. Somebody made that possibility. With that time now goes your data. Your data will finish and you want to invest in. When you pay data, what are you really paying? Think well. What are you paying? Time. When you pay for a venue... And they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000. What did you pay for? If they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working, what are you really paying for? If you take away time on earth, nobody will pay anybody for anything again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is an event and then men begin to invest in this. And now they are married. God bless you. Thank you. Ask him what it took to create that time. <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding, there's no reception. Oh God, take my shame. That's, that's, that's labor there. It's labor in prayer and faith. It's not just an activity. In all labor, there is profit. <laughs> goodness. It takes diligence. Please sit down. Sit down, Pastor. If you are not diligent, listen very carefully, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence. There are many, many men of God. For instance, I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean, that, that great man of God at that age was just crying out his life. Many people believe life is so cheap. They just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor, they believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence. Many of us here, the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent. Diligence does not mean 
you are not moving. You are not moving strategically. You are just busy around, trying to hustle. What business are you doing? Oh yeah, let me join now. What are you doing? Let me just apply. I will apply everywhere by faith. You believe that what you are doing. Uh -uh. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 14, please. Let's read two verses, 28 and 29. I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you, intending to build a tower... Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost. Whether you have sufficient, do not start it. Finish it. You can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start. Otherwise, the Bible will not talk about it here. You can know that I have capacity to finish this vision. Next verse. Lest happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In fact, let's, let's read the next verse. Saying, this man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Are we together? That you become strategic about your life. Not just to take action. Many young people pray in tongues. They fast dry. As soon as they are done, they just get up. Just because the Holy Spirit told them, do A and B. They just get up foolishly. They, there is no, they, they don't have that strategic approach to life. A man comes with his wife. Look at this. You are married to your wife. And you are acting as if, how will the finances be run? The Spirit God is faithful, is it not in this life? You are not diligent. Let's pray. Wonderful. But you are not diligent. There is no planning. There is no strategic approach. Are we together? You have real issues that need to be dealt with. But you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything. Faith is not foolishness. You are sitting down. Let me show you diligence. How much do we have now? 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house and you are a pastor, that means there is no organizing conference. There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they work themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four, now, you think that just because it is spiritual, you are not strategic about your life. You will never prosper and you will not do well that way. Are we together? A man is starting a ministry and all, no members, there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying 100,000 per month or per week. Believers, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you will be surprised that your life is not making progress. A tongue-talking, born-again believer is receiving salary of 50000 You will find him in Zaria Suya Sport. He will buy five chicken. One for apostle. One. You think just because you are buying for apostle means you are, you are not diligent. If one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five, fifteen thousand, what percentage of your salary is that? All of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming. 
Is it not funny how people forget? They have children, and then two weeks to resumption or three days, they'll say, ah, sorry, yo, I didn't for Where is the PTA letter? You are not diligent. It's not about having money or not having money. The same way people come to church, when they now say time for offering, they are surprised. You are not diligent. You are not strategic about your life. You just stand and guess. While the offering is coming, quickly you just touch your pocket, bring out everything and drop it. You are not intentional about life. I tell you why many things are not working for us. We are praying. We are happy. But we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be done. I have prayed, I have fasted, but I took out time, the entire retreat. I'm not just going as the spirit leads. There is something intentional to be inculcated in the people. And because of that, it demanded two days. It's not God that told me two days. The wisdom of the word and the level of investment I seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training. The first dimension of being diligent is not hard work. It's being strategic. Being strategic helps your energy to be worth it. Many of us are dissipating energy, but we are shadow boxing. Apostle, it's not like I'm sitting down. I'm moving. I'm doing something. What are you doing? Have you thought about what you are doing? There are people who can start 10 businesses in one month. It's a sign that they are not diligent. They were not strategic over what they are doing. I just want to do something. I want to get my hand doing something. You are just hard working. You are not diligent. A diligent person will sit down. You will look at your lifestyle. You will look at your goals and your vision. You will look at what capital you have. The knowledge, the level of knowledge you have. You look at that business relative to your service. Relative to your life as a workforce person. You look at every other factor. How long do I want to do this business? Is it just to help me get capital for something bigger? Or this is a line of interest I seek to pursue? There's no diligence. That's why there is no sustainability in the things we do. We just jump at whatever we hear is happening. And do you know, let me tell you this. When you, when you continue failing for a long time, you will stop believing yourself. I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people, but they come to me and say, Apostle, why, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me, as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fasting itself is easy, but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing. And the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice. And the person is saying, I thought this thing comes by it. And you are saying, no. Let me tell you what you are doing wrong. I will not become your member. There are many things you don't know. You are not diligent. The man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members. He's not planned it. Ask him, have you done your homework to one those members? He says, I can preach. By the grace of God, I'm anointed. I'm a mighty prophet. I'm an apostle of God. Is that all it takes to run a church? Are you seeing that now? A lot has not happened. We ignore all of these things. And then he sees and says, oh, one day we will take the nations in the name of Jesus. According to my vision, I saw doors opening. Uh-huh. What do you think will happen? So we just sit down and feel like, uh, let's do a conference. Light and glory, prophetic encounter, season one. You start, now I'm not being sarcastic. You just sat down and thought, okay, what is this conference supposed to do to my members? What is this supposed to do relative to their spiritual level? Relative to the level of ministry? Relative to our finances? I'm bringing one guest minister from Ghana. I'm bringing one guest minister from London. I'm adding Apostle Joshua Selman from it. What is your budget for the conference? Two million. What is your entire church offering for a year? 500,000. God is faithful. You see that? 
That is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever. I don't care what kind of tongues he prays. There are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house. You see it in their life. Show me your notebook under God that I know that I'm in one small room, but I'm already planning. And these are the steps. I am being strategic. Let me tell you this. I stand before the God of heaven. Come, Ejimi. Be my witness. There is nothing you see being done in Koinonia today that I did not say will happen. He will tell you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I can bring notebooks for you and show you where I wrote these things. And I wrote everything that will be done. When Koinonia was going to start, I told you that I saw CGC bigger than this. It was small, but I saw it expand. It's not just vision. So we began to prepare. When the Lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things, I sat down. I said, it takes a lot. I studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world. It's not just prayer and fasting alone. You have to be strategic. At a particular level of ministry that I get to, I may not be outside on a bike again. Somebody will embarrass me. Will I have the financial level at that time to at least have a car? What if Koinonia needs to run Gen 24 hours? These are things, thank you sir, thank you so much. These are things that many people never plan for. You just sit down and say, let's have another baby. And God is watching you. Say, you, you, I did you hear yourself? Let's have another baby. You see, Nigerians and Africa, we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of God because we are not strategic. The baby comes and the man does not know what to do. They are confused and he's angry. You are the stupid woman. Why didn't you advise me when I said, let's have a baby? Say, is it my fault? And, and, all of, and the baby who is innocent here is watching. And saying, well, so what is, what is going on now? What are you going to do with me? If I ask many of you here, my dear brothers and sisters, don't stand up. But if I say, how many of you are in ministry, not will be in ministry, are in some kind of ministry, many people will stand up. And I look at you, if I say after 10 years, many people will be struggling, they will get angry. They'll say, Apostle is proud, he's talking nonsense, he's being stupid. But I said this thing years ago, that many ministries will struggle in the future. Because I saw by the Spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be stupid. I want you to show me what are the systems that will take to excel and God said if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price I will show you when I was saying some of these things people laughed at me others insulted me others said a lot of things it's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the swallow of ignorance God is the builder of all but let me tell you every house is built by someone yes Diligence involves being strategic. You have to sit down and plan. In the name of Jesus, God is faithful, but I have to plan. What is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the Holy Ghost in Koinonia? It's not enough to be anointed. Imagine that you did not put that system in place. A time will come, half of your members are not filled with the Holy Ghost. My God, that is some, that is some, some Babylon in your church when half of the members are not filled with the holy ghost you are in trouble already what is the system in place for all of this is part of being diligent number two diligence involves sacrifice mm. many of us miss it in this area sacrifice is a non-negotiable price if you want to ever be great the sacrifice of prayer. The sacrifice of prayer. You see. The sacrifice of fasting. 
the sacrifice of paying till you understand the word of God. God is my witness whom I serve. I don't know how many hours I've slept from yesterday till today. And it's going to be a marathon into the week, just going. Don't get me wrong, I rest. But every man knows uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. You see that? While you are sleeping and praying, Oh God, bless these people in this retreat. Open their eyes. Let Koinonia service today be powerful. Bring the people. Let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders. My brothers and my sisters, no matter what God has given you, the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with. It will cost you. We are a generation that likes comfort too much. We are a generation that likes pleasure too much. We are a generation that is so averse to sacrifice. The moment you have to constrain yourself a little, we complain and shout and ramble. Yet if you see the kind of results we want, it takes, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Take sacrifice. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, why are you not responding to me? I've been calling you and you are not responding. What is this? And I just looked and said, this, this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that I get every day. And the things that I have to do. I was counseling people yesterday. Counseling people in Lagos. I already knew I was going to miss my flight. I told this, my people, I said, you guys should just go to the airport. I'll find my way. Just go. I knew I was going to miss my flight. But the people that I was, it, it was a strategic counseling. And I said, no, no, no. Let me miss the flight. You just go. And they went. As soon as we're done, I went to the airport, got the next flight that could come to Abuja. Instead of just flying down to Kaduna and coming to rest, I had, because of sacrifice, I routed down to Abuja. And then from there now, from the airport back, I arrived in the night. As soon as I arrived, I just went, refreshed myself and went to work immediately. Apostle Joshua Selman. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, we are proud of you. We saw that in Lagos they gave you an award. I said, don't look at the award. Look at the hands that collected that award. The sacrifice. We like pleasure. We like clapping. But the inner price, the price, Apostle, what do you do that people are just blessed like this? What do you do that they are anointing? You are just talking and people are jumping up and down. My brother and my sister, it's not a charm. It's a price. Even a charm has a price. Yeah, Palace will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic. Do you know how much you are going to pay? It's a price. I can't remember the last time in my life I watched a movie. I have television, but it's off. I can't remember the last time the TV in my room was on. Honestly, sincerely. Why did you buy it then? I must enjoy you. It's my money. Then you will never become anything in life. There is a huge price. Please, young people, listen. Being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless. You must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes. Nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing. It's a combination of many factors, including a track record of consistency. Every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough. There must be predictability to your destiny and your vision. Your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you. Otherwise, they'll come and receive miracles and just go away. Human beings are not stupid. They are first human beings before members of any church. Sacrifice. Say so I receive grace to be sacrificial. Mm. Sacrifice. When you carry the money you should buy a book with and read and you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of 100,000 you allow a Luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of 100,000 to prove a point. You are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness. Let me tell you, 
It's not just when you have, you spend. There are times that a door can be opened, but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come. It's not every open door that means God has licensed you to pass. The door does not have to be closed to know it's not time. It can be open, but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing. Is God speaking to us? Sacrifice. Many of us are comfortable with little results. That's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters, men of God around this nation and the world, they never go far. They start small, small signs and wonders, small membership, small miracles, small testimony, and you know that arrival mentality. I look at myself and say, Apostle, you've not started though. You've not started at all. You never come to my house. I have received so many awards. You never come to my house and see one picture that I snap with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency. You will not find one. I don't trust them. They are deceptive. You won't find any award on my table. This, he received award from this one. This one he met with this governor. This one he met with this. You, it's not Joshua Selman. Those things are deceptive. I push them. What you find is my future on my table, not my past. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I get hundreds of text messages every day. Apostle, you are a sign and wonder. The apostle of our time. Great man. There is a testimony. Apostle, we've been trusting God for a child for eight years. Remember, you spoke to us. Now the child has come. Apostle, let me have your account number. We want to be sending this and that. And sometimes I put my phone in front of me like this and I look at it. I said, Lord, deliver me from deception and complacency. Deliver me. Compared to where we are going, this is only a step out of the cave. There are still lands to conquer. There are still territories. What have we seen that we brag about? There are deep things in the spirit. When you have an arrival mentality, you will never see the need to to sacrifice. In this kingdom, you don't arrive. You don't arrive. All those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when God is moving. Is God speaking to us? Many of us here are not willing to sacrifice. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice. Apostle, I like movie. I'm like that. We are all we are in our family. It's a gift. It's not a gift. It's an appetite you have refused to curb. It can be a gift, even if you are called into the movie industry. It takes diligence to sit down and plan. Can be a gift. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Some of us need to trust God for grace. To off that laptop. Off that phone. Off that television. And say, television, I'm tired of watching other people fulfill their assignment. I'm ready to sit down. Lord, you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry. I open my Bible, not TV. There is a time to watch TV. But in the name of Jesus, I sit down. When others are sleeping, you wake up. Your eye wants to close. They don't try it. Don't try it. I'm going fast. Lord, open my eyes. And you are hearing one message. You are about to rest more. There's another worship backing you up. Then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit. Because you are preparing for an extraordinary life. Men of God, there is no shortcut to this thing. Let's not mock God. There is no shortcut. That blood must really flow. The way to the throne is the cross. There is no other way. Hallelujah. And you sit down. The, 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 the sacrificial dimension of diligence. There are times that God will demand from you. 
I have 10,000. That's all I have. And God says, carry it and give me. And he said, say, God, no. You are, uh, if you are really God, your mercies endure. You are new every morning. All those statements of unbelief. You carry that thing by faith and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, let me be stupid for you. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain. I show you a man that Satan cannot do anything about. When you, when you master pain and it no longer touches you, the devil will put his hand on his head and say, what do I do with this person? Because pain is its edge in your life. The moment you are uncomfortable, you run away from that thing. The cave you fear holds the miracle you look for. That cave. The cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there. You must trust God for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard, eyes closed, and say, Lord, if I perish, I perish. Is God speaking to us? Yes. Say sacrifice. Say it without sacrifice. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your energy. Many of you see what God is doing through this ministry. Did you know that sometimes as early as 6 or 7 in the morning, the workers are already at work. You see this guy standing, the worship team is behind me. Male and female, no difference when you are in the worship team. They are standing there. So when you hear me raise a song and they are singing, it's not robots, human beings. Behind everything that works is a man making it work. Behind everything that works, if you eat a delicious meal, someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it. If your cloth is nice, someone paid the price to iron it. Please let us settle it once and for all. Nothing just happens. If you are fed spiritually, at the back of that revelation is someone sacrificed. We devalue the sacrifices of men in Nigeria. You look at young people talking about men of God. And they have zero revelation, zero result, zero discipline, zero vision. Yet they sit down and tear men of God. They talk about men of God. This guy is more anointed than this. This one is more sound. Ah, that other guy in, uh, in, in Ghana. Oh, have you seen the one in this? Oh, and they sit down and analyze. Any day you see sacrifice, don't pretend you didn't see it. Stop by and salute it. Even if you are in a hurry, the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice, please don't pass and ignore it. Stop and say, I salute the investment of God upon your sacrifice. It's the reason why when we finish service, we allow our elderly ones to sit down. It's not just because of favoritism. The sacrifice of time. The sacrifice of life. The precious workers in this ministry. Some of them have been working since morning. Some of them will only go back early in the morning. And some of them by, by early in the morning, they are going to start their work. Sacrifice. The koinonia you are getting blessed by. Many of you, when I mention a scripture, you see it here. At the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well. What do you want in life? Are you willing to pay the price? Or are you willing to let the price be paid for you? No. Say, I receive grace to be sacrificial. One more time, say, I receive grace. Show me a man of God that will sacrifice in prayer, that will sacrifice in mentorship, that will sacrifice in the word, whose heart is open to understand the systems of God. My brother and my sister, I show you a man of God that no devil, no power, no cause, no charm in existence can stop. Show me a man. Who is willing to settle down and understand God's financial systems and pay the price? I show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever. Show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable. I show you a man who will never beg, never beg, never beg. 
Something happened when we were traveling to Lagos. Very humorous story, let me just say. I got into the plane and then I saw, I saw a couple and their mother. They were shouting at us. So I said, these people have come to embarrass me now. And they were happy. And then when we got down, the mother came and hugged me. Said she has been listening to my message. My son, let's snap. And we were snapping and the mother just squeezed some money. I said, mama, don't do this. I don't know you. I said, you, you must collect you. And I said, ah, this is somebody's salary. And somebody saying you must collect. The key is not anointing. It's value. Value. If you are not valuable, no mama will stand behind you. A, a wise son makes a glad father. A foolish son is a reproach to his mother. Nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing. Let me tell you the truth. I'm being hard on us. I love you. Our retreat has started. Workers. Value. Stop packaging, faking, lying. Settle down and say, in Jesus' name, I must get this thing. Stop looking for money. And trust God to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable. They were carrying my luggage and then I sat down somewhere at the airport. And the next thing I saw some group of boys. I know how people look at me. I just know that they are about to embarrass me again. They came and said, Apostle, ha, ah, Jesus, this and that and that. I was sad because I missed my flight. I was on my way to pick another flight to come back. And then I get into the plane and I see someone looking at me. Apostle, and he shouted, Jesus. I quietly went and I sat down. There was a space between me and the next person. True story, yesterday. The guy got up and left his workmate and came to me that he wants, I said, no, you want to embarrass me here. We started creating a scene. And you know how people in the plane cut, ah, they were happy. The guy said, I'm not going. He wanted to kneel down there. I said, what is all this now? Ah, this is a, a flight that is taking us. The guy said, he must sit down close to me. I said, okay. He sat down close to me. When everything was done, I didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money. He works in Abuja. And he just carried that. I said, no, 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 I won't collect. I will just bless you. And I said, once upon a time in my life, this is what I needed to eat dinner. And Jesus was still Lord. If you are not valuable, nobody will reward you. My brothers and my sisters, success is not a charm. If you are not valuable, nobody will reward you. Stop making demand of, from life when you are not giving anything back. It's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back. So after you, he said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare. The warfare is not just fighting demons. You are wrestling with prophecy. In the name of Jesus, a word has come that God is my Ebenezer. To help you means you are doing something. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to settle down and take my life seriously. Why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing? It's like a stench from my life driving them. Why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry? Something is wrong. Value. I don't share this testimony to brag. I told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said, please, do you know Apostle? He said, yes. He said, I'm going to transfer money to you. Send it to him for me. The thing paid the man of God. He called me and said, Apostle, what is this? Somebody doesn't know you and knows me. Then now sends money to my account and says, I should transfer it to you. I just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed. He's my very good friend. Value. You can make up your mind and say, in the name of Jesus, I will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year. And then when you are prophesied like that, you carry your spirit, your head, your mind into the room where the spirit of God breathes upon people. And you say, Lord, there has to be a way. There has to be a way. I can tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When you mean business, the gate of destiny must open. The reason why many of us have not forced that, that gate must be broken. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. The gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak English. Oh, gate, I'm standing here. No, stories, you are, you are mocking yourself. Gate, you must open. You must open. You didn't open for my father. Look at what he said, him and his wife. 
that nobody ever married legally. I'm sure he made up his mind in the name of Jesus, I must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church. When he was saying it, the evil force, he said, let's see what will happen. I did it for your father and your mother. Let me tell you something. Sacrifice is a covenant. When you make up your mind to sacrifice, it's like entering a covenant with God. Gather unto me, my saints, 50 verse 5 Psalms. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Number three. Diligence involves resilience and tenacity. Now, this is where I want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight. Please sit down. Everybody say resilience. Everybody say tenacity. Come. Hold me. Try to resist me as I'm moving. This is how life is. No destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land. No, sir. There are not only giants in the gate. The giant starts from Egypt. They will pursue you. It's not just the giants on the promised land. There are giants where you are going. There are forces that will stop you. So you are to hold me again. You are trying to move forward. And these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you. It takes faith. You will fail many times. And you say, Satan, I will wear you by my consistency. Whoever told you that just because God spoke to you, you will succeed at first. There is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. Believers, this is where we miss it. The average Christian, when he fails once, he will bring all kinds of jargons around and you and say, you see this, this and that. And Christians, we are very good at making people to stop rising. The moment you do something, you, you, God told you you are going to take worship to the nations. Your first album, you bought it by yourself. So I won't disgrace myself like this again. Sorry, Mr. Man. That means you are not ready to get to the nations. Life rewards tenacity. You put the first album, it doesn't work. You say, I know I didn't get anything right, but at least it gave me exposure. Let's go to write the second song. The first one, I just composed nonsense. The second one, I'm not just going to involve the Holy Spirit alone. I will involve a music director. So both the Holy Spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it. Are we together? And now, by the time you balance it, your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism. A day will come, you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time. Whoever told you champions become champions from day one? Don't you know that success is overcoming many failures? You never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving. God is speaking to someone already. Man of God, just because you started ministry and nobody is patronizing your grace, just because you started ministry, every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never, never come for their conference again. Just because the first sermon you made a mistake, you forgot the scripture because of tension, Anointing will not drive tension like that. It takes experience to drive tension. You will need to do this thing many times. Ramble on the stage more than once, twice. And then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself. You can articulate. Do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back? Especially if they are frowning at you. You crack a joke, nobody laughs. You forget the scripture. No amount of prayer will take that thing away. It's a track record you must create. So it's not a spiritual problem. It's, a, it's just the, the, the challenge you face on your road to greatness. You don't go back and say, Oh God, but I fasted now. What evil spirit and no evil spirit entered you? Consistency. Consistency. A day will come you will build confidence. You will be able to look at people and preach. Is God speaking to us? Say in the name of Jesus... I will wear failure 
until I succeed. The word wear there doesn't mean to put it on. It means to wear it. If my expression is not correct, find your own. The idea is frustrate failure till you succeed. Look, let me tell you, failure can be tired. I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say, I'm tired of this guy. Go, pass, and the gate opens and you walk gallantly. I can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised. I remember praying for somebody years ago. They took me to pray for someone on wheelchair. I think I've said it in maybe 2012 or 13. I went full of the Holy Ghost. Those days, you fasted and prayed for everything. Even if they said, lead praise and worship. I prayed for, I, I took out time. If you see the level of revelation I shared. And yet, when the time came to pray, all in the final analysis I prayed, I laid hands and I know the man had faith because faith comes by hearing that guy gave me all his attention I knew his spirit was in what I was saying let me give you a little testimony as we come <laughs> let's laugh a little you see this guy here I love it Jimmy. let me tell you this when I started teaching them how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the principles of impartation. Something happened one day. I left a Jimmy and one lady. He was together filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, when you see him talk now, you are flying from your chair. It's a track record. I remember a Jimmy talking with the lady in, you know he's very intelligent. He shared every revelation when he finished. See, now tried the lady was tired she said I'm, I'm tired this thing i mean it's so it pained him and then I, I can't remember the story exactly i think he called on me and i came and i mean in less than one minute that lady was and we were going home and jimmy was gloomy he just said but ah, that at least if she fell down he knew he would have helped her faith I remember comforting him and said, don't worry. Do you know why I'm taking out time to add this drama? So that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you. Amateurism is allowed in the school of success. Every professional was once a student. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of being a student. Just make sure you continue. So when you go for the meeting, and just like Apostle taught you, your blood is hot from SOM graduation. You received fire here, and you... Just organize a meeting. And in the name of Jesus, you waited for word of knowledge. You were surprised. Nothing happened. The crusade, you prayed. Said, I sense the anointing here. And the person who fell was there. And you just, everybody is looking at your error. And as soon as they shared the grace, you went back and said, Kai. Of course, God will always leave himself with a witness. But you go back feeling, Lord, Abba. If I was wrong, couldn't you have even just done it? And then we can settle it later. God says, no, pass through it. It's a track record. The day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening, that day people look at you and say, how did you start? You say, my brother, I didn't start with a blind eye opening. I started with finishing a service like funeral. <laughs> because nothing happened. Prophesy to someone, say, pay the price. Say, pay the price honorably. Hallelujah. Ask every doctor here, when they were students, the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh. Ask every lecturer here, when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students, he didn't smile at some of the things. I'll be Pastor Alpha. You can look at some of them and say, this thing is hard. Yet today you are the one teaching it. Hallelujah. So you stand today and declare in the name of the Lord. And someone is blessed. You are learning the principles of finance and favor. You get up with that zeal and go and start a business. You start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read. 
and you eat your popcorn alone. Nobody comes. You just say it's an evil spirit. No, sir. Look, let me tell you this. If you learn this tonight, you will not be ashamed of your pain again. The next time things go wrong, it's not always demonic. Sometimes you just say, Lord, I thank you. Look at the apostles. Think how many times they were embarrassed. Do you know what it means to be mentored by Apostle Jesus? This is Jesus we are talking about, the apostle of our faith. Having mentored some guys full of grace and truth. And then they went to pray for an epileptic patient. Mentored directly by Jesus, not John, not Moses. And they laid hands on that guy. In the name of Jesus. And the guy was not healed. The people would have beat them there to kill them if Jesus didn't come on time. But a time came, hallelujah. Peter, when Peter is in a room, they line sick people. Not for a crusade, Peter is about to pass. And his shadow, mastery they call it. Mastery. A realm and a dimension had come. Did you know once upon a time in my life, I would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing. No, I would lay hands, then you will fall. So if I want five of you to receive any impartation, I will patiently follow. I didn't have the luxury of just making a statement. Where who, who dash monkey banana? But you ask the devil in the pit of hell. Ask him. He knows. That you stand and make one pronouncement and open the two lead gates over men's destinies. It's not just an impartation. It's a track record. Are we together now? Listen, tonight, I want you to know that failure is not the end. It's a pathway to success. This is the level where many of you are now. That's why I'm explaining to you. You are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening. Lord, come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed. And you are already getting angry. You are already getting frustrated. Father... I thought Apostle said that if we finish dancing, I've danced and danced and danced. I put my prayer request. I danced through the night. It happened to me too. Don't think it just manifested. Let me tell you something. The future you are trying to enter, a large part of it by God's grace have entered. I can tell you what to expect. It will do you like a dream. The day... The day the legal claims of your training is over, you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say, God, tell me the joke. What is this? What is this? See, a day will come, you will look at your life and not find any scar. And you are saying, where did it go to? And God says, enjoy the blessings of your endurance. When you see someone going to NDA, you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level. Tamawan? Yes. But by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade, he stands with honor. The fearful, weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today. They can send him to Maiduguri and he says, where is Boko Haram? I'm ready to face them. Some of what you are going through... God gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together. There is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage. Sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you. So God makes you strong by making you stare at your fear until you become friends. Your fear will no longer run away from you. Is it not the rent? You stand with the landlord. You stand with the policeman. And finally, you will learn that police does not kill. Landlord does not kill. You no longer fear. Then the miracle comes. And God will say, it's not that I could not supply it. I wanted to build your heart so that you are strong. Notice that every time you fail, if you use it well, it can impart faith in your heart. This is something until you are in the school of the spirit, it will never make sense. Hallelujah. You can turn your fears to your miracle. Man of God, the fact that you gave a word of knowledge. Oh, I'm seeing Pastor James on you. He said, no, my name is Pastor Alpha. Uh, your, your wife, you married Judy. He said, no, sir. If you, are not, if you are not serious, we will drive you here. My wife is called Annie. You, do you, you have five sons. No, sir. We have two. Two. 
I'm seeing a girl. No, sir. I have a boy. And you turn back and say, God, if you didn't send me, why embarrass me? I can go back to, I can use my accounting. Can't, what is it a bank? I can't go and work in a bank. And God says, you are a prophet to the nations. Let me tell you, do you know while you are, help him. Oh my God. You see that? Do you know that while you are complaining, God never talks to you about that issue. He gives you another assignment. He now says, all right. That lady, go and meet her. Stand before her before I will tell you what to say. Say, mm -mm. God, what is her name first? Say, no. Go and stand. And you now say, young lady. No, I'm not this kind of guy. If you say, I'm saying, no, no, no. I know you are somebody's wife. God just sent me. So I yeah, talk fast. Already, the, your, your hearing is hazy by her shout. Listen, he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation, and say the Lord said I should speak over this nation. No matter who writes an article writing nonsense, you have been immune. There is a vaccination you have received. All these people that cry over little persecution, you were not trained well in the school of the spirit. Is God speaking to us? Oh God is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire. And God says, so you're 50,000. And he said, Lord, please, I, I, is he you? Confirm it in a dream. And you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him. You even see yourself giving it. You ask God to confirm every other thing. You will, you will have a close heaven. But confirm this one at once it will come. And you keep giving like a fool. Until one day someone advises you and says, look, I know that, you know, this destiny, we take it easily. And God says, listen to me. And one day, in one year, when the rewarder of man, ah, oh, 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 